Hello, this is Pastor Tony Collins from the House of Worship once again, and thank you so much for inviting us once again in, in, into your home. We're really excited about the opportunity just to spend some time with you and to share with you the anointed word that God has given us. Uh, today we want to talk about testing, that God uses testing to make sure that things are authentic. Think about life, there's so many things that are tested. And you, in fact, may be going through a test right now in your life. I heard an a, a, a old preacher say one time that, that everyone is either going into a test, they're in the middle of a test, or they just came out of a test. And so the questions that you may ask while you're in that test is, why am I going through this? What's the purpose of this? And as importantly, how do I pass this test? And so we want to deal with that today. We want to discuss that today. So come on with me, and let's go into the sanctuary and hear the message. I want to speak to uh, you this morning from the topic, the testing of my faith. The testing of my faith. I want to make the uh, declaration, if you will, today that there are three types of people spiritually uh, in the world in which we live. Now, you can look for yourself in, in these three types, and I understand that I'm, I'm generalizing in, in, in many ways, but there are three different types of people. Category A are those people who do not know God. They do not have a right relationship with God. They may have had, heard the stories of God. They may know the stories of the Bible. They may even go to church uh, occasionally, or some may even go to church on a regular basis. But they do not have a relationship with God. That's category A. Category B are those people who have a relationship with God, but they are living at best a mediocre Christian life. If you watch them and the way that they live their lives and you watch those who are unsaved, you will find many times they are they're barely distinguishable, if, dis, if distinguishable at all. That's category B. And then there's category C, who are the Christians who are not just reading God's word, not just coming to church and hearing God's word, not just communing with brothers and sisters in Christ, but they are putting or they are applying God's word to their lives. Or in other words, when they see their life and they look at God's word and wherever their life is contrary to God's word, they're changing their lives to meet the standard of God's word. I want to say to you today that category B, that Christian who's living the carnal life, the mediocre life, whose life you look at and their life isn't much different than the life of the, of the person in the street or that person who will not apply God's word to their life on a regular and consistent basis, that, that, that those individuals for, to a great degree are why category A continues to be category A. Category A looks at category B. The unbeliever looks at the carnal Christian, the Christian that will not apply God's word to their lives, and they basically say, if that's what Christianity looks like, then I don't want to be that. Amen? Amen. So, so, so the purpose of the, the message today is to encourage you, if you're in category A, to at least get in the, B, in the BC range, and if you're in the B range, to encourage you to begin to apply uh, God's word to your life. And it really wants to take a look at this scripture and help us to understand how God works, how God works in the spiritual. And so we're talking about the testing of your faith, the testing of my faith. And there, there are really just there's three areas that God would have us to look at today in regards to this scripture. One is the, the, the pain of the test. Two is the price to pass the test. And three, the purpose of the test. So let's take a look at the, the pain of the test. He says here, um, you ought to get excited about it, he says, but sometimes it's necessary to be distressed in various trials or to be distressed in various tests or to be grieved or to be anxious about what's going on in your life. I want you to know today that everything that's, that's of value at all, it has to be tested. And it's not a test house of worship, church family, until you reach a point of having to do something that you don't want to do. 
That's, that's, that, that's, when obedience, that's when obedience kicks in. Obedience doesn't kick in as long as whatever it is that's coming down the road. You just want to do that anyway. But the moment that you get something that you don't want to do and God's word tells you to do it, now, now, we're, now we're, we're, we're moving to the, the testing, pl- testing place. And so the purpose of a test is to make sure that whatever it is that's being tested meets certain specifications and to manage risk. So you think about some of the things that are being tested. Think about students. When I think about tests, the first place I go to is students. And um, when you think about students, they they go to school and and they study and then they take a test. And so the purpose of the test is to make sure they meet certain specifications. Or in other words, they understand the material that that they're being tested about on. And then to minimize risk. If you never never took a test and you just watch kids just go through school, that when you got to the end of the the year, you wouldn't know whether or not they were ready to to go to the next level or not. And so there's, there's a huge risk that they may not be ready. And so as a result, now you have to leave them behind or, or they, you know, they're, they're unprepared for the next grade. There's a whole bunch of issues in regards to that. So when we're, whenever something's tested, the reason that it's tested is to make sure it's meeting the necessary specifications and also to manage risk. Just think about things that are being, that are tested. Uh, right, right now, we're, uh, Elder Collins and I, we're struggling with a computer uh, with a printer at our house. But we know that that printer has been tested. You know, we, we get it in a, a nice box, and, and, we, and we pull it out, and we, we plug it in, and we do the things on a, on a keyboard, and that, comp- that, that printer works. And the reason that it works is because it's been tested. It's been tested to make sure that when we plug it into the computer, it actually works. It's been tested so that they make sure that it works so that, that there's not a bunch of people buying computers and taking them home and opening up the box and then pulling the computer out, the, the printer out of the box and have it not work because then if if it, that happened, then the manufacturer gets a bad reputation. Hmm. Okay. All right. So you got to think for a second that everything, if it's important, it's going to get tested. Students get tested. Your car gets tested. You go and buy a shirt and open it up, and they'll say, uh, inspect it by Inspector 9. The, the, the shirt gets tested, your job, you get tested on your job, you get tested in your finances, you get tested in your relationships. I don't know if you've ever had your marriage tested, but my marriage has been tested. And I want you to know that believer, you're going to get tested. That if, if you're going to be used by God, if it's of any significance, if it's of any importance, I want you to know today that it's going to be tested. You're going to be tested. We're going to be tested. You're going to be tested to find out if you meet the specifications of an authentic believer and to make sure that when he sends you to the next level in the name of Jesus Christ, you're not going to give the manufacturer a bad reputation. Hmm? So you're going to be tested. Adam was tested. But he, but he failed his test. David was tested. Moses was tested. King Ahab was tested, and he failed his test. There, there are, there is litany through the Bible of people who are tested. And, and typically, no, not typically, but every time we're tested, it's always tested through affliction. Now, affliction doesn't always look the way you think it ought to because you, you, can, you can inherit uh, an abundance of something and it looks like it's a blessing, but it really it's an affliction because you can't, you can't handle it. Huh? So, so you're going to be tested. I'm going to be, be, be tested. We're going to be tested through, through, through affliction. And you need to know that life in the name of Jesus Christ presents you and I with its crucibles. Life presents you and I with these moments, these these seasons, if you will, where it's a hot place. It's severe testing in the name of Jesus Christ. When you think about a crucible, it's a, it's a, it's a fiery furnace, if you will, that the, that, that the, the goldsmith, the, 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 metal, the, the metal maker, if you will, he took, he took metal and he put it down in this hot place and he held it there until all of the dross rose to the top and he skimmed it off. I want you to know today that our lives, your life, my life, there are hot places in our lives. Places of severe testing that God allows to come into our life. Come here, Job. Take a listen at Job. Job was in a crucible. When you read through the book of Job, that's Job's moment of testing. 
That's the crucible of life where, where everything that he loved was peeled away from him except for, except for his wife. You and I are going to have moments of testing in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, you look at the, the, the three Hebrew boys in the name of Jesus Christ, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had their moment of testing. You're going to have your moment of testing. Gideon had his moment of testing. Even Jesus had his moment of testing in the Garden of Gethsemane. You're, you're, you're going to have a moment of testing and I want you to know today it's in the midst of these moments, in the midst of the pain of testing. There's pain that comes with testing. In the midst of the pain of your testing, that's where you and I will determine our spiritual destiny. Now, you can be saved and you can be going to heaven. You can have your fire insurance. But I want you to know today that when the testing comes, it's going to determine where you're going to stand spiritually. It's going to determine in the name of Jesus Christ how, how impactful you're going to be in the, in the world that you live in today. It's going to determine when, when you want to have a word over someone's life, maybe someone that you love, whether it has any power or not in the name of Jesus Christ. How we respond to our moments of testing, our moments of, of darkness, our moments of, 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 of difficulty, that's going to determine our spiritual destiny. And then secondarily, there is the price to pass the test. I want you to know, brother, brother Chris, that there is an enemy to our God, and he is an enemy to those who are believers and whatever it is that God has created. And this enemy, his name is Satan, wants to know what is your price to end your commitment to God. That's, a, that's, that's always been asked. He asked that, to, he asked that to, um, to Adam and to Eve at the very beginning. He said to them, in essence, that all you have to do is eat of the fruit, and, and that was all it took for, for, for Adam and Eve, for, for Eve anyway, is that the idea of being like God, the idea that I could know all things, the idea that, that somehow this was going to elevate me in some way, that was all she needed. That was the only temptation that she needed to end her commitment to God. Adam's deal was that as long as Eve's going, I'm going with her. That's all I need. I need to, all I need is the influence of a woman to end my commitment to God. What is it that he wants to know about you? What is it that he wants to find out about you? What is it that will cause you to end your commitment to God? You know, I'm talking to the people that are in the B and the, and the C category, the ones who are in the A category. They're, all, they're already there. They don't even have a commitment to God in the name of Jesus Christ. But what is it, believer, that will cause you to end your commitment to God? For some people, it's money. I can be committed to God until a certain point when they start asking me to tithe, they start asking me to give money above, above $5, 10 $15 a week week, then, then I, I end my commitment to God. Some people, it's time. It's about time. I, I'm a busy person, and I, 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 I'm gone all the time, and when I come home, I want to be home, and, and I just don't have time to, to deal with the, the, the church and the, and the things of the church. For other people, it's the approval of others. That as long as I've got my crew, with my crew agreeing with me about what I ought to do, and we're all going together in the same direction, then everything's going to be good. i got a club mentality. If, I, if, if so-and-so leaves the church and I'll follow them down to the next church, wherever, wherever that is, that, that I need to make sure that I have the approval of others. I'll, I'll go with you all the way, Lord God, until I don't have the approval of others. Some people, as we already saw right here, is people who follow their tradition. But this is how we've done church. This is what church is about. And this is how the pastor is. This is how the pastor acts. And this is what he's supposed to do. And this is what the deacons and the associate ministers are supposed to do. And this is how we do church. And the moment we get outside of that tradition, we are no longer committed to God. For others, it's, a, it's idolatry. You know, the God, not, 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 not the God of the Bible. And I really believe the Holy Spirit was saying this to me. I really believe that there are people who come to church, not here at the house of worship. There are people who come to church. They, 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 they're here every Sunday. They're here every Wednesday. They read their Bible every day. They work hard and diligently in the church. But the reality is that the God that they serve, it is not the God of the Bible. I believe they're, they are totally and completely convinced that they are doing what they need to do. But in the name of Jesus Christ, when you look at the scriptures and you look at their lives, you, they, they don't line up together. And so that has to be a different God that they're serving. But then we have all of our little gods that we have. We, we have the God of, uh, of I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll commit to, to God until it, it stops feeling good. Oh, can I get a good amen? 
I'll keep doing what God wants me to do until it stops feeling good. The moment it stops feeling good, then I'm, then I'm off the train. I, I, I'll keep doing what it is that God wants me to do until I look around and it no longer looks good. It, it's not big enough. It, it's too big. It's not black enough. It's, it's too black. It's not white enough. It's too white. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'll keep doing what God wants me to do until I reach a point of saying I don't want to. The God of I don't want to. I'm, I, I just don't want to. I don't want to get up and, and go pray. I don't want to. I don't want to be there early anymore. I just don't want to. The God of I never have. I've never done that. Nobody I know has ever done that. Why are we going to do that? The devil wants to know what's the price. What's the price? What will the devil have to, to serve to you to get you to say, to get me to say, I am no longer committed to God. I will no longer honor God. I'll honor God in, in, in 90% of my life, but in this 10%, I will no longer honor God. I will not honor God. The devil wants to know. That the, the, you hear Jesus Christ, you hear God saying to Satan, he's, he's walking back and forth from the, uh, uh, in front of the throne of God, saying, have you considered my servant? Job. God allows trials in our lives, House of Worship Church family. In fact, I would say he even sends some in Job's situation, trials and difficulty in our lives, huh? that is distressed by various trials. Huh? He sends them in our lives so that you and I can prove that we don't have a price. That's the thing that gets God excited when he finds out, and you can prove it to heaven, you can prove it to hell, you can prove it to yourself that you don't have a price, that there's no level of discomfort, there's no level of trial, there's no level of hardship, there's no level of pain and suffering in your life that's going to make you throw down and denounce your commitment to God. You're going to go with God all the way. What did Job say? Though he slay me. Yet, yet shall I, I trust him. And so the price to pass the test, the trial that's in your life, the difficulty that's in your life, the challenge that's in your life, the price to pass the test is simple, full surrender. I, 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 notice I didn't just say surrender. I said full surrender. Or in other words, that you don't have any doors that are locked in your psyche. You don't have any rooms that are forbidden for God to go into. In other words, you say, Lord, have your way in all of me. Uh, and some, some people are influenced. They, 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 they love God until we reach a point of pride. And, and, and you know, anybody can be prideful, Amen. I don't care who you are, you can be prideful, amen? amen. And, and I, it, 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 that spirit jumped on me this morning. I had to, had to, I pulled into the parking lot downstairs and had to, had to apologize to my wife. Uh, you know how you're driving along on the road and somebody was just trying to cut you off? You know, they're just, just going to take it to the tip, you know what I'm saying, right? You know? And so I just, I, I, wasn't, I, wasn't going, I wasn't having it this morning, Sister Christine. And, I, and, and, and so I, I, I blocked them from taking it. And then my wife said, oh, you know, like, oh, you know. And... Uh, and so, so, I, so I, I blocked him from taking it, and then about, about 30 yards past that experience, Holy Spirit said, what are you doing? He <laughs> said, that was so prideful. So, that was so, so, so if you let them in, so what? Does that, that ruin your day because you let them in? That was just so prideful, Tony. That was so, I had to stop and say, I, I apologize, sweetheart. I apologize for that prideful move that I made. That was so wrong. That was so unchristian-like in the name of Jesus Christ. And, but, but we allow pride, pride to get in, right? You know, it, it's, it's there. It's, it's lurking at the door at all times. Yeah, it is. And so we, when we had pride, you know, I was offended. I was offended. And he thought he could come up there and just cut in on me. Who does he think he is? Huh? I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere. He's not even going to church. Look, I don't know where he's going. He's probably going fishing somewhere, you know? And who does he think he is? You know, come and cut in front of me. I, I was offended by it. Uh, I, I, I took offense to the fact that I was being challenged by someone to take over what I thought belonged to me. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I, I was offended until the Holy Spirit came to me and said, you are so wrong. But we don't like being told we're wrong. Huh? We don't like being told that we need to change. We don't like being told that, that while you're doing it, there's a better way. Huh? 
And so we have to be careful that in that moment, uh, as I was caught today, that, 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 I, that I'm willing always to pay the price. I'm willing always to surrender, have full surrender in every area of my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Surrender to the Word of God. We hope that you are enjoying today's broadcast of Anointed Word with Pastor Tony Collins. If you enjoy good listening, we offer a CD entitled, Emmanuel, God With Us, the House of Worship's Praise and Worship CD. If you enjoy reading, we offer the book entitled, 100 Days of Inspiration, a book for those who have encountered the storms of life, or 10 Things Every Church Member Should Know, a book on how to become a positive influence in your congregation. Any one of these items are available for $20, any two for $35, or all three for $50. Thank you in advance for your support to this ministry to further the gospel of Jesus Christ. Send your request for CDs or books to The House of Worship, 190 Manhattan Avenue, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, 37830. Say glory. Glory. Now back to the message with Pastor Tony Collins. The purpose of the test is that we may have that which is more precious than gold. And that is God's, God's testimony about you. I wonder today that if we handed God the microphone here at the house of worship and ask him to go around the room and give his testimony about us individually, understanding that none of us are perfect, but I wonder what his testimony would be about you. Would he say that he's put you in difficult situations and while you have not passed every test, but you are passing the test and you continually to grow in grace? You continue to get closer and closer to God because that's the purpose of the test is so you'll get closer to God? That, that as you pass the test, the trial comes and you pass it, you pr prove that you're really authentic, that gives you, brings you closer to God. That gives you more power. That gives you more mm, the ability to walk in greater abundance, the ability to, to exercise greater uh, authority. You, ha you have it, but you can't exercise it because you're not passing your test. James 1, 2 through 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers. Con consider it pure joy, my sisters. Consider it pure, pure joy, house of worship, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know. Somebody say, I know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance or it, it develops patience. And perseverance or patience must finish its work so that you may be mature. Somebody say mature. mature. And complete. Somebody say complete. complete. And lack nothing. Somebody say and, not, and lack nothing. That's the purpose of the trial. The purpose of the trial is that you and I may prove that we are mature in the areas that we're not mature in, that we can continue to grow into maturity. That, that we might be complete, not lacking anything. That in any area of our lives, we, 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 uh, we, we read about it last week, we talked about it last week, about how when we sow generously, mm, when we sow generously, how God takes that and turns it around and supplies us that, that, that we're, we're wealthy in every area. That we, in other words, he's talking spiritually first, but that we are complete is what he's talking about. And so he's saying the, tr the trials, the, the trials. And so when, when, when I have the trial in the name of Jesus Christ, I can, I can blend those two together, all you do is, is to begin to sow generously. And so, so generously is let somebody in who's, who's trying to cut you off. So, so, so generously is, is willing to be willing to say, I'm sorry. So generously is to be able to look at, to take a look at myself first when I look at the Word of God, not look at other people in the name of Jesus Christ. So generously that, that, that I might be, that we might be complete. So the question is, are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to give your money? Are you willing to give your time? Are you willing to... Uh, to, to, to not worry about what other people have to say? Are you willing to throw down traditions and rituals of the past? Are you willing to have humility? Are you, are you willing not to be offended? Are you willing to be challenged by other people that, that are in authority over you? Are you willing to say, have someone say to you, hey, maybe you're wrong? Are you willing to be told that, that you can change? Are you willing to put down your, 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 your gods, the God of I feel good, the I, God I don't want to, the God that, that I, I never have? Are you willing to do whatever it's required of you that you might pass the test from God's perspective? Because if you are, 
that hold on to your spiritual seatbelts because it's getting ready to be a really great ride. But if you're not, then that test is coming back again. It's coming back again and again and again and again and again and again and again. The testing of my faith. There's a pain of the test. There's a price to pass the test. But don't forget what the purpose is because the purpose will help you come up with the price. Full surrender. In every area, in every area of my life. That's what he's calling for. What a powerful word, what a wonderful word for those of us who are going through the test, that God has a purpose, that God has a plan, and that plan is to prosper us and to bless us and to bring us to that, that good end, that life of abundancy, that life of prosperity, as we respond to the test according to God's word. And so for you today, if you're here and, and you're listening today, I want to give you the opportunity to, to respond to the test of life that life has a test for us to, to, to see whether or not we are going to respond to, to God and to the, the, the sending of his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us. If we're going to respond to that test, if you will, in a way that honors God, in a way that's going to bless us, in a way that's going to bring prosperity into our lives. And the only way that we can respond to that test and, and be successful is to ask Christ to come into our lives, to ask Christ to, to be a part of who we are, to surrender, if you will, our hearts and our lives to Jesus Christ. So I want to give you that chance today, and all you have to do is just to say to yourself, the God's word says, if I, if I say it with my mouth and I believe it in my heart, that Jesus Christ came, that he suffered, that he bled, he died on the cross for me, that I would be saved, that I would never be disappointed when I call on the name of Jesus. I would never be ashamed if I called on the name of Jesus. And so however you can put that into words and just right where you are in this moment right now, ask Christ to come into your life, to surrender your heart to him, ask him to take over your life. And if, if you say that and you believe that in the name of Jesus Christ, that God changes your destiny, he changes your eternity, he moves into your heart, and he makes things better. There's a, there's a better way for you to live your life. No matter what you're doing right now, no matter what's going on in your, in your world, if, you're not, if you have not given your heart to Jesus Christ, I want to tell you today there's a better way for you to live your life. I want to pray for you just briefly before, before we leave today. Lord God, I just want to, in the name of Jesus Christ, I would ask you to just touch the lives of those that are watching me through the, t through the telephone or however they're watching, maybe they're listening, I don't know, Lord God, but asking you in the name of Jesus to reach out supernaturally and touch their lives. They may be going through tests and they may be going through trials, they may be going through difficulties, they may have problems that they're dealing with. It may be marital, it may be financial, it may be children, it may be health. I don't know, Lord God, but you know all about it. But right now, in the name of Jesus, for your glory, God, and for their benefit, I'm asking you to reach out, Father, and touch their lives and make them aware that you are aware of them. They may be lonely, Father. They may think that no one cares, Father. But right now, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you to send a message, send a messenger, Father. Do something in their lives, Lord God, that they know that you are aware of them. Touch, Father, what needs to be touched, Father. Heal what needs to be healed. Break what needs to be broken, Lord God, for your glory and for your honor. That's why we pray. Thank you so much once again for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next week. Have a blessed week in Jesus Christ. Please pray for us. Know that we're praying for you. Have a blessed week in Christ. Bye-bye. <laughs>